Welcome back to another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. In this case, these aren't exactly our first impressions. Um, we've played the finals before. We talked about it a little bit back in March. It's a game I'm more than happy to return to, though, especially after the miserable experience that was the day before. It's just a nice reminder that real multiplayer games do exist, made by people who understand what's fun and lean into it. <laughs> so strange, I know. Like, I'll come out and say it now. If you're looking for a twitchy multiplayer shooter that looks fantastic and is super fun to play, you can't go wrong with the finals. So the finals is a free-to-play competitive team-based multiplayer shooter where teams of three compete in large, highly destructible maps to be the first to earn a bunch of cash, which is found in lock boxes around each map. Your team unlocks a box, you get the money, you deposit it in the bank terminal, you guard it while it's processing the cash out, and you score, basically. There's variance in the rules for different types of games, but generally, first team to cash outs wins. There aren't actually that many modes or maps, but the game manages to mix things up with variations on map types, and the class build variety ensures the game can feel extremely different even when you're otherwise just doing the same thing over and over again. Sometimes you're in a game with almost no heavies at all, and the map remains mostly static. Other times you'll get teams uh, who are just smashing stuff all the time. Team composition makes a huge difference in how a match plays out, and even what the map is going to look like by the end of the match. Like, in certain games, you're literally going to be running around in a big old pile of rubble. I couldn't stress enough how dynamic the environments are and how much of an impact this has on the potential differences between matches. Those are basically the two things that really make you stand up and take notice. The destruction, which is just incredibly impressive, and the relatively balanced character classes that give you a lot of tactical depth without any one build to breaking the game. There are definitely certain class types you're going to see more often, but from my experience, none of them feel unfair. How certain people choose to play the game can be a problem, but I think it's kind of a minor issue, and I'll get into that a little bit more in depth in a while. But immediately on booting the 1.0 version of the game, I was able to tell that the PC performance was just way better. This was already a really nice looking game, but the visuals are actually improved and the performance is improved and everything runs great even when things are just chaotic as hell. And I'll probably rant and rave about this a lot, but really just how dynamic the maps can be, how the map can change so much depending on your actions. Like, and I don't just mean in destruction. You can glue up doors, you can create barriers, destroy bridges, stairways, zip lines. You can add zip lines. You can add bounce pads. And that starts to sound like Fortnite a little bit, but it's not like Fortnite. It's not even really Fort Light. It's a couple of ideas that are similar to a couple of things you can do in Fortnite. And it's streamlined to such an extent and figures so specifically into a, a context that they've created that just works. Compared to the beta, there's actually two more maps, which brings the total up to four, which does not sound like a lot. It sounds like, oh man, what a dearth of content. Uh-uh. These maps are extremely good, and honestly, the game could exist on one map, and I hesitate to believe it wouldn't stay fresh. That said, I do look forward to them adding more maps, not because it's necessary, but because the two maps they've added are really, really good, and they seem to really just perfectly understand what makes this game tick. The rules of the game have been altered just a tiny bit since the beta. I would say I think build variety is probably higher. The amount of weapons and gadgets each class gets isn't that varied compared to other multiplayer shooters, but there is a little bit of room for expression here. Certain builds are definitely favored in some game modes because of how easy and powerful they are. Like in casual, the cloaking light is a favorite because they're not that dangerous if you know what to expect. The three classes are very simple. You got lights who are fast, favor mobility, mediums who are more of your standard soldier class, my preference, um, and the heavy, which is the toughest, but also slowest, and gets the most destructive and defensive tools. The heavy can aggressively just burst right through a damn wall if you want them to, and it's awesome. And like I said, my preference is actually the medium, but the heavy also has a sledgehammer, and you know they're nodding towards Red Faction Gorilla with this thing. You didn't think I would get through a game with probably the most extensive destruction in a triple A scale, particularly multiplayer game since Red Faction Gorilla, without mentioning Red Faction Gorilla, right? 
I mean, this is game ranks we're talking about, right? In the beta video, we talked about how the heavy was the most fun, but probably the weakest in the meta, but that's not the case anymore. They can be absolutely absurd when used correctly. Um, there is not a lot you can do to stop them in the hands of a capable player, uh, but having a good team is essential. It's a 3v3v3 game, so coordination is a requirement if you want to beat enemy teams. If one player runs off on their own and gets killed, it is a huge disadvantage. Probably the best way to play Play the finals is with friends. Playing public can be miserable at times because you'll get stuck with teams that don't know what they're doing. They split up and they die constantly and that's not exactly a lot of fun. Sometimes you can find a decent team playing in the solo queue, especially now that people are starting to understand the game, but it's still kind of a crapshoot. Having some friends along for the ride is it's definitely going to get you the most out of the finals. Along with the four maps, there's basically four game modes. They're split between casual and tournament. Casual has quick cash, which are these short 3v3v3 matches where you get two cash outs. This is my favorite. I like doing quick cash. Bank It, on the other hand, has four teams of three competing to grab cash, which there's lockboxes, but there's also money for eliminating other players and the first team to 40,000 wins. Tournaments, however, are the real meat of the game. There's unranked tournaments where you play through three rounds against three different teams in a tournament format. And instead of unlimited revives, you can only come back twice. And if your team gets wiped, you get penalized cash from your final amount. And there's a pretty long wait timer. Ranked tournaments are even more unforgiving. Uh, they don't let you swap in reserve equipment mid-match, and there's four rounds instead of three. This is where the quote-unquote real game is. But don't even bother unless you've got a team who all understand the game because you just get demolished in this mode. It's absolutely brutal. Like I said, I, I enjoy quick cash. I love just dropping in and blasting through a match. But for players who take the game very seriously, the tournaments are where the meta of the game is, at least in my opinion. Um, nothing feels too broken or overpowered there. It's surprisingly well balanced for what it is. And yeah, there's some annoying class combos that'll get tiresome to deal with. But with the right team, I really didn't have a lot of trouble. It's a game that encourages some extreme sweat, which can be annoying. Um, you'll have to deal with a lot of twitchy light tryhards who are just running around looking for kills rather than playing for the objective, but you'll also find they're not that effective. I like playing with shotguns and two good connecting shots with those and a light's gone. So if you're good at what you're doing, you can handle those folks pretty easily, I think. I'm not particularly good at what I'm doing and I can handle them, so yeah. I'll say probably the most annoying thing is when you get stuck with two of that type of person on your team because they're going to just separate from the team and get killed halfway across the map. And you'll have trouble completing objectives because they will always be dead. But even with a good team, it can take a while uh, to learn what competitive play even looks like. There's a lot going on and it can be overwhelming. Uh, trying to just run and capture objectives like Call of Duty or something, you'll, it's going to get killed. Standing near a cash out station or a lockbox, it's a free kill for the other team, so you got to be smarter than that. You got to trigger an objective, throw down some traps and trackers, wait for the enemy team, or better yet, just wait for two or more teams to fight over the objective and ambush them when they're out of ammo. If you can take them all out and you're the last one standing, it's going to be way easier to steal that thing. If there's one thing about the finals that took some getting used to, you only get one main weapon. So when you run out of ammo, you can't just switch to a pistol to finish someone off. You either need to get used to slamming melee or have some way of protecting yourself like goo grenades. Otherwise, you're dead. Also, you're never really out of ammo. It's just reloading. And if you have a friend backing up, reloading isn't really a big issue. Even if you die, your buddy can grab your token and revive you someplace safer. It's, it's actually a great system. It's also another way the game punishes teams that don't work together. As long as at least one person on your team is alive, you can respawn pretty quickly. But if everybody dies, the timer resets, and it takes longer to come back. It's like 20 seconds. That can be a long time in this game, believe me. They've put a lot of thought into this one. It's overall just really fun. A little twitchy, uh, but I would say in a good way, team-based shooter. There are some negatives that get in the way of the fun. Um, I'm not going to say there's none. There were a couple of glitches. The game crashed a couple times on me. Never during an actual game, though. I had a weird bug with the RPG one time that was odd. Sometimes the destruction can get you stuck in the environment, which sucks, but only ever happened to me once. And considering how dynamic the destruction is and how much crap can get piled on, it's impressive that most of the time there aren't issues. Getting around the rubble is actually generally pretty forgiving. I had one other glitch while playing uh, i don't know if it was a connection issue or what but during the stretch of games maybe across the half hour or so 
I just got stuck for no reason whatsoever. I couldn't move at all. I didn't get disconnected from these games, and that's why I'm not sure if it was connection issues, because generally, when I did have a connection issue, it just disconnected me from the game. So I don't know exactly what to think about that, but yeah. This kind of crap is extremely rare, though, and I almost forgot about it. This game's so damn smooth, it's really easy to forget when it messes up. Uh, there are some monetization things, which is a negative in my book automatically, but the game is also free to play. They gotta make money somehow, so it's not so automatically egregious as it is in a $60 game. But you got your standard timed battle pass, in-game currency, daily challenges, the usual stuff you'd expect. The battle pass has to be purchased with in-game money, but at least it's a flat 10 bucks or 20 bucks for one that skips 20 levels. And then they don't try to pull any BS on you. They never force you to buy more in-game currency than you need for the pass. And everything in it is purely cosmetic. So I don't love microtransactions, but by the criteria, this is some of the more harmless stuff. There is an equipment unlock system, but it's beyond forgiving. You start out with a basic loadout for each class, and as you play the game, you get points that you can spend to unlock new equipment in whatever order you want. The game's very generous with these unlocks, so it's not going to take very long at all for you to get whatever you want. The game's got one of the most inoffensive progression systems I've ever seen in a free-to-play game. Honestly, it's not going to take you very long. The only negative I can say about the finals is I kind of wish there was more. Class variety is there, but I'd like more maps. I'd like more gameplay modes. I don't think these are things that are going to stop me from playing it, though, because they, man, they, they got it. I would love to see a kind of match that lets players cut loose and destroy as much of the environment as possible. Like Splatoon, but instead of ink, it's about destroying buildings. Like, you can't tell me that wouldn't be amazing. A destruction race mode. Like, they've got the power to do it. Let us do it. Cheaters may be a little bit of another negative. Any free-to-play game is going to have some kind of cheating problem. But for my time with the game, I didn't really notice anything egregious. It's something the player base has complained about, though. So it's possible there is a cheating problem. I just haven't personally encountered it. It doesn't feel fundamentally different from what I played back in March. Uh, but the gameplay modes have been refined. The player classes have given more tools to play around with, and the two new maps really keep things from getting stale. For some people, the speed and quality of the updates of this game, is, is, it might seem slow, but man, oh man, it is quality over quantity. Everything here, the maps, the classes, everything, it's all really good. It can be a frustrating game at times, but when you execute a plan with your team or run through a battlefield where all the buildings are just crumbling around you, it's one of the most uniquely fun multiplayer games out there. I friggin' love the finals. It is currently my favorite multiplayer game. I, I am not great at it. First person shooters have never been my strength, but I will also say it's a game that's really enabling me to get better at it. It's steady and predictable in terms of feedback, but it keeps throwing new situations at me, despite the fact there's only four maps. I love this game. Highly recommend the finals. But what do you think? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So subscribe and don't forget to enable notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.